What's up guys, welcome back to our Rhode Island passive home. Last time we were on site, we had Ken from Sega and we were talking about our window buck install. A lot of you guys asked, why aren't we using liquid flash? It's tape origami, et cetera, et cetera. So behind me, you can actually see a lot of these are done. Actually, all of the ones that you can see in the shot are done. Um, and we made a couple changes, but primarily what we were really focused on was making sure that we didn't have these redundant and, you know, overly built up tape details. Julia, who's actually on site today, we're gonna to catch up with her in a little bit, took the time to make sure that a lot of this stuff was installed in a way that made sense. You can see that we changed the MyVest on the inside jam rather than installing multiple layers of the wiggle of tape all the way back. It just made more sense for us. So all of these are now prepped and ready for our windows. Uh, some of you guys had asked what we're using for windows. We're gonna be using the shown windows. Those are due to arrive next week and these openings are going to be prepped and ready. And then we'll get into our two layers of our comfort board insulation. Inside, a lot of the springboards have been removed and they're continuing the framing. And one of the coolest things is the rear overhang has been framed. So inside, you're getting a real feel for the space. You're seeing this awesome big ceiling here. You can see they, they, they do have some of the staging still set up because they are working on some of the skylight details. I think we talked about that, that in the last episode. Um, and Doug, maybe we can share the rendering on this, but these two skylights here actually pour light down into the living space. And then there's another skylight that drops down into our hallway that leads to our primary bedroom. So looking out here, I want to call attention again to the awesome view of the river. We have the residential section over there and then the more commercial windmill section over here. What I like about it is this is, your, this is gonna be where your kitchen is. So we're gonna work with materia. Uh, Ken is working on the shop drawings as well as the design with Julia and getting this kitchen all figured out. Uh, once this outside wall is framed and our ceiling is framed above the kitchen, we'll get on site, we'll site measure, we'll go right into uh, getting this thing ready for fabrication. But when you're working, this is your work zone. It's your, work, your working kitchen and you have the windmills out this awesome corner window. Uh, Julia was actually just talking about how they took the time. This is one of our window mock-ups from Shown. You can see TOC here is top of counter, and that's going to be 36 and three quarters off our subfloor. You have three quarter inch for your finished floor, and then top of counter is going to be 36 inches from there. But they're going to set. We're going to set this rough opening. So this right here, this window will swing right above our stone countertop, and then go up, and then have a very similar flush detail to our our ceiling into the top of our window. So we don't have these weird plaster jogs. It is a, a window from counter all the way up. And again, this will be a corner unit here. Now that corner unit will stop and it'll turn back into a wall in roughly this section because this is gonna be a multi-slide door that will actually come back and pocket into the wall. So when you're sitting in the dining area here or even the living area down here, you're gonna have a corner piece of glass, miter glass, and then you're gonna have two panels that open up, slide all the way into the wall adjacent to the kitchen, and this is a clear view out. It's really nice, and, and it's one of those things that I find frustrating with sliding doors is when you slide a door open and it's in front of another piece of glass, it just looks unfinished. So if you can tuck those panels in the wall and now it's a clear opening, and you have one pane of glass there, one pane of glass there, it's just a much cleaner look. Um, of course, on a day like today, you're going to have those doors closed. They're super high performance, so you're going to keep the heat in. But when it's nice out, especially in the spring or maybe even in early fall, uh, it'll be really nice. I want to call attention over here as well. This is the primary bedroom. So working our way down, we actually have a uh, bathroom as well as a closet. And then you walk into the hallway. I talked about the skylight that's above. You can't see it here with the staging. Pouring some uh, sunlight down. But this is where the bed is going to sit. And when you look out, you have a wall there, but you have that corner piece of glass as well. And seeing all of the residential section of the river. Uh, you can see the framers are actually now building that knee wall and you see how, just how high that window is. And that will go all the way up, all the way up to the ceiling. Just a really killer view to wake up every morning and kind of see the river. And on a day like today with the river roaring down, down, uh, downstream. Let's go downstairs. We're going to catch up with Julia. Uh, Julia and Brian are actually down there and they're mocking up our deck detail. And before we head down there, that's what is going to be along this whole section here. Out to the left, all the way across the back and then tying into our breezeway here. So we have a, a wraparound porch 
But that wraparound porch, we've talked about our exterior uh, insulation details. There's a lot of details that we need to figure out in order for us to have the frame thermally broken from the rest of the house, but also talking about uh, mitigating rot and things like that. But what I'm standing on is the breezeway that will actually end up getting a rubber roof as well as decking that continues all the way back so you can access the rear deck from the front yard. Special thanks to Brian. Brian actually got our, um, built this little ramp here, this ramp set, so when we get our windows and doors, we can safely get down to the lower section of the backyard and into the basement here. So we're gonna walk through the mock-up of how our deck attaches, as well as everything that's going on in our wall, as well as our deck framing. So we are with Julia Nugent, who is the homeowner and architect for this project. Uh, we haven't formally introduced you, however, you're on social media all the time, you're answering all the questions. So this is one of the questions that's come up personally for me. Uh, a lot of people have reached out and said, hey, how are we attaching the deck to the home? We have two layers of exterior insulation. We don't really want our ledger all the way up against it. I'm gonna stop talking and let you walk through what, what you've designed here. I think when you're attaching decks, one of the principles is that uh, you never want the deck structure to be able to um, your interior structure. So you always want the deck wood to be separated from the house framing wood. Right, and um, typically that's combated with a standard flashing detail where you come down our yeah. plywood, you have a piece of, you know, tip, right. not aluminum, but a flashing over that ledger to right. divert water out. Right. But this is more complicated. Right, because if we have the passive house and we have the six inches, inches of insulation, and also based on sort of sequencing of when they want to build the deck versus the house, um, we need to get the the ledger for the, you know, the headers for the deck to be six or more inches out from the, from the edge of the wall. So um, in our construction, and uh, you might be able to see this upstairs, we have these very big LDLs uh, that are hanging, uh, that are on top of the wall, but then um, sort of supported by that big piece of steel at the basement. Um, those are supporting the, the Eight, eight foot tall glass wall, basically. So on the not, first floor. So this is yeah. not structural in the sense of the roof. It's structural in the sense of it's holding up the glass. Right, the roof is actually held up by the steel. By the steel, And our, right. we've talked about that before, yeah. all of the steel being in board, but we still have a structure on the outside for right. strictly the door and the doors and the right. windows. Right, and there's a, a 20, I think it's a 20 or 22 inch LBL um, that's between the first and second floor that's holding up the top of the the lower level glass and the bottom of the upper level glass. Right, and we're also using that to attach our deck. Right, so imagine this piece was actually 22 inches deep. Um, and our deck is going to start out here, well the, the structure of the deck is going to start out here. Um, we have our sheathing with the uh, air barrier, air, air water barrier. We have two, in two layers of insulation that gets us out six inches. Um, we have the outer sheathing, which will have the cedar breather, uh, basically a rain screen mat that allows the cedar to be held off from the from this. Um, which is an important, important detail to note, like we have our barrier back here. This out here doesn't actually need another WRB. It strictly just needs something to yeah. help shed the water. But the product that we're yeah. using does have a, a right. staple basically, on. It, it basically has a staple on backing that protects the plywood um, and just sort of the bulk water that would otherwise get into this cavity. But it, but it doesn't have to be the air barrier. So we don't have right. to tape it. We don't have to be really like careful about that. We You're managing bulk on. water only. Exactly. So that, um, it's actually a, a Benjamin Obadike product, the mm. slicker that we're going to use, Slicker Max, we're going to put on top of this. And then the cedar would be out here. So um, sequencing wise, we don't want to build the deck right away uh, for various reasons. And we need to figure out a way to secure that bracket so that the deck frame is well beyond this. So let's pause for a second. So these right, we'll get, we'll get to these yeah. in a minute, but the, these, this is a main deck bracket. Right. And it's made out of aluminum and it's designed to keep your deck ledger off and of. And the, basically the depth that they've designed it for is for a brick wall. So that's why it's this particular depth is, is when you have a brick wall and you want to. I'm learning that right this. now. Okay. <laughs> That's why it's this particular depth is that you would normally be attaching this to the house ledger. And you'd have a brick, brick veneer. veneer. And then gotcha. this is where you would have uh, your ledger for your... Um... And Brian, who's behind, behind the shot here, you've actually <laughs> used these before on your parents' home. Yeah. And the nice part is, if you, even if you weren't doing a brick, 
typically you would attach this to this level, yep. to your sheathing, through into the, your structure, and it keeps your ledger apart, and you could actually get one piece of exterior insulation on it if you wanted, yep. but in our case, you can it's see that we have two. Right. So now we can't put that against the plywood there because your ledger is now into that first layer of insulation. And realistically, you want, you want it out here. Right. So Hayes O'Neill and you guys had yep. coordinated two layers of LVL. So we, so we called them up and said, you know, we need to pad this out because we had originally intended on attaching this directly to the ledger. And I said, you know, we need to get it out another inch or inch and a half because it's actually, and they said, pull out the piece of plywood back there, have, cut out where these are going to go so they go directly onto the LVL to LVL. There's no plywood in between. But mm -hmm. Smush. Um, and then they get bolted all the way through from the back of the bracket to the other side of the big LVL, uh, all the way through to the back. So it's side. through bolted. It's through bolted at that yeah. point. So as far as our air barrier, now we're interrupting that. Are we adding? Are yeah, we, we wrapping to, this? We have to basically wrap this. Um, sure. Probably not. I mean, it's these are pretty airtight. So sure. I would say it's really more the seams probably that we have to worry about. Use the wig love tape put, or something. You could also put a piece of, you know, caulking yep. back there so that this sticks on sure. with caulking basically. I think that's probably the way to do it. Some sealant. Um, so these guys, uh, they are then screwed before the, this is bolted through, they're screwed to the LVL with essentially just ledger locks, correct? Ledger locks, yeah. yeah. So these will be pretty easy to, to basically screw on. So they're going to give us a, a pattern. And one of the things that was interesting that we were talking about is I, I said, you know, can we use like an eight, eight inch by eight inch cutoff? Because this isn't a very big. And he said, well, it's really a moment connection. So this, is, this tendency would be to pull this way. So he said, you know, run them long. Like they might be 18 inches. They could be narrow this way, but they should be long. So, so, that so effectively, that rather than a short LVL having the ability to rock, that longer yeah, that one is longer a lot one stiffer. Is, is, is not going to roll over, basically. Um, so that'll prevent this from the moment overturning. And I think it's important to note that that rocking, it's it's very slight because realistically, oh, yeah. we, we actually have posts on the outside of the deck. Right. It's not a cantilever condition. It's just, We're it's, not just that the, it's just that the weight is not... The force of the weight is not a direct gravity load, it's a kind of turning load. Sure. So. so, and what this does is if we pull this insulation over. Yep, so then we can insulate behind here, right, into that gap. And then we have that plywood. And we have the plywood go in. And now we have a small air gap that effectively we can put the, the slicker in behind that. Yeah. And now your cedar will come down. Yeah. We'll have a, some sort of cap over the, the ledger that will divert bulk water over right. that ledger. And then as you come up underneath, you can actually tuck your shingle and it's right, a really right clean it. look. Exactly. Yeah. That's great. What's going so, on with the, the, the plywood up here? So, so right above the deck, um, you know, so let's say the, the deck is, the decking boards are six inches below the finished floor. And on the inside of the, of the house, we have uh, a one and eighth inch Vantec. Um, we actually are cutting away that Advantech as it goes over this LVL that's on the outside because we wanted to kind of sink the frame of the, of the, door, the door down a little bit in order to basically just from a view, view you know, sideline point of view, it, it reduces that sightline. Yeah, typically so, you would see that subfloor all the way, all the way to the edge of your edge, framing, yeah. right. which it is right now. There, and if you, if you look, there's actually a snap red line, which I think is right. our window line. And they're going to cut that piece out. And it will pull it back right, to there. Pull it back. And then they're going to land that, that um, lift and slide door directly on this. Which um, is that, that, that tripled up right. LVL. But there's one problem, which is that we have these giant hangers off of these LVLs for beams going the other direction. You made a comment a couple of minutes ago <laughs> is that you can't draw everything. Yeah, and this so is a perfect you, condition. Exactly, like I didn't, I mean, I draw as much as I can, but there's always a, a condition that just, you just don't draw it. Right, it's like and, you're gonna put an arrow yeah. and say, hey, use this hanger, but r the reality is like, well, that hanger's a quarter inch thick. Right. How, do, how do we now yeah. land our door so in now, that? And, and, and um, we don't want to ship this door. It's, you know, incredibly heavy glass, uh, triple glazed um, door. Yeah, Sean is really relying us to they land. They wanted to land directly on the LVL, not on shims or any kind of, you know. Um, so we have to get past this. So what we've decided to do is, and this isn't quite the right depth, um, we're basically going to pad it out with a smaller, a smaller piece of Advantech. Um, you know, Five eighths, correct? Five eighths. Yeah. yeah, I think this is a little thicker than that. So we route out where the hangers are pop this down and then what it'll do is it'll actually we're actually going to have it pass by exterior wall exterior wall and then have a drip cap 
um, that will. And that's important not only for the, the water, but you have an exterior integrated screen. Yeah, so the, so the door with the really the big weight lands on the LVL. The screen doesn't really have much weight. Um, it can be picked up by this little extension. Um, and then that will have a, a lumen. We're going to get custom made aluminum um, nosings, basically, and a, and a custom uh, riser. So that when you have the operable piece, you know, from deck to the house, you have a, a really solid piece of aluminum that you know, won't get kicked or you know dented over time, and it will be entirely like backed up by a solid piece, piece of wood of, underneath it. Right. This will probably get doubled up actually, so it's a little thicker as it comes out this way. And one of the a moment ago, you said that there's actually a six-inch step from door down, yep. and that's really important to us here in the Northeast. Is that we deal with ice and snow, where West Coast you don't see that. Oftentimes, you yeah. see this really great flush condition, which we love. But even okay. with the four-foot overhang sitting on the river here, we're going to get yeah. wind-driven snow and ice. And it's really important to have that step. Yeah. Um, We've been here in some of these, you know, really windy days. Uh, today is pretty windy, and. Um, one thing I found, you know, we had a blizzard a couple weeks ago, right? And, and we got two feet of snow. That outside area was entirely scrubbed clean because- Out here, because, because, because of the wind. was so powerful that it, there wasn't any snow right outside the house. <laughs> you know, it just blew right off. Yeah. But, but I think that the wind, I mean, the rain is what we really are like, that wind-driven rain. Right. Um, and having that yeah. flush condition yeah. just, it makes it more cumbersome. Yeah. You know. So this location is, you know, we're not on, we're not right on the ocean, but we're 50 feet up from the water. Mm -hmm. So actually, this door is, you know, 65 feet up from the water. Right. And, uh, you know, we're getting wind that we wouldn't, you wouldn't get in a typical neighborhood. You know, right. So just because of the, the exposed condition. Yeah, and that's, you know, and as you guys seen, the that overhang is four feet deep. So it's really just this, like, it, it's almost like a, a a kite where it just wants to capture exactly, the wind yeah. and so giving that tremendous uplift. Yeah, so actually the roof is really designed for uplift. Like the, the uplift load is greater than the gravity load of the mm. roof. So when, you know, all that steel and, and the LVLs up there are about the wind, they're not really right. about the gravity. It's just about bolting it down yeah. to the foundation, making yeah. sure this doesn't go yeah. anywhere. Exactly, yeah. Um, and the, so the final detail, Brian actually reached out to the guys over at Prosico um, with Ken's recommendation, they don't actually have a product yet, they're developing them, uh, to go underneath our door. So we're actually gonna be using a liquid flash in, that, in these conditions, especially down where it's closer to grade, but we're using it underneath all of the doors. We'll touch base that on a future episode. Appreciate you guys staying tuned. Julia, thanks for being in this episode. Uh, we'll make sure we bring her along a little bit more. We'll get Brian on the mic next time and we'll see you guys then.